So good morning, grade 12 students. In this session, we'll continue with the chapter 12 exercises on your book on pages 245. And this chapter will be about the neurotransmitters and the medical applications. So yesterday, we talked about the exercises. We solved exercise two, talking about TEPP, the function of TEPP. And also we talk about the acetylcholine neurotransmitter that has an excitatory role. And also we talk about the acetylcholine esterase, the enzyme that used to degrade the acetylcholine and to inhibit its function. Talking about the acetylcholine, inland acetylcholine esterase who enzyme that degrades acetylcholine in the synaptic left. TEPP in this exercise, it inactivated this enzyme and it will inactivation and thus blocking the degradation of the acetylcholine. So TEPP prevents the degradation of the acetylcholine by the enzyme uh, acetylcholine esterase. Also, non-degraded acetylcholine, they will accumulate in the synaptic graph, so more acetylcholine, so more excitation and more contraction of the muscle. So TEPP it acts at the level of the synapse by inhibiting the action of the acetylcholine esterase. So I did man, but then put the نحن الأسيتركولين أستريز هو إنزيم شو بيعمل من اسمه أسيتركولين أستريز so أسيتركولين أستريز بيعمل degradation for أسيتركولين in the synaptic left إيش هاي دي TEPP insecticide شو عملت عملت to inactivation عملت to inhibition لهاي ده الإنزيم thus it blocks the degradation of the أسيتركولين so صار عندي more أسيتركولين صار عندي more contraction of the muscle so from now on you have to know this note about the أسيتركولين Esterase and its function. Also, we move to exercise three. We talk about the uh, neuromuscular synapse, the motor, and the plate. Talking about the injection of the acetylcholine and the curer. Already, we talk about acetylcholine and curer. They are antagonistic. They have opposite function. They have opposite role. So we talk about the acetylcholine and the curer. We said that the acetylcholine and the curer they have highly similar spatial configuration. They are very, very similar in their structure in their shape that's why curare can bind to the receptors of the acetylcholine thus it blocks the binding of the acetylcholine to its receptor so this leads to the relaxation of the muscle and even though may lead to the paralysis later on so again acetylcholine whenever it's present it prevents the propagation of the nervous message and it binds to the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle so again acetylcholine how we uh, released by exocytosis, by the process of the exocytosis from the secretory vesicles in the presynaptic terminal toward the synaptic left. Whenever it's released, it binds to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. This binding will lead to the muscle contraction or it provokes or it leads to the relaxation or contraction of the muscle, sorry. So this is uh, blocked or this function of the acetylcholine is blocked whenever we have curare. Why? Because the curar will bind to the receptors. are receptors. Whenever they bind to the receptors of the acetylcholine, this will lead to the blockage of the action of the acetylcholine and will lead to the opposite function, will lead to the relaxation of the muscle. That's why we say that acetylcholine and curar, both of them, they have opposite functions and many have antagonistic. So they are two antagonists. In about the delay or delay or latency and he is the time between the recording of the nerve and the contraction of the muscle and the timing between the recording and the contraction is a mere delay time needed for the response to start and whenever we reach with the immunology but in the immune system and what the meaning of delay delay it's the time needed in the immunology the time needed for the immune response to start so in details the delay or the latency Period. Moving now to exercise four. Exercise four, Sean Biakin. Exercise four, they said in the synaptic region of a motor neuron, two different doses. We have dose D1 and another dose D2 of gamma aminobutyric acid of the GABA. They were injected. The membrane potential or the potential difference here in millivolt was recorded according to this graph that is shown in this document. They said, analyze the action of the GABA on the membrane potential 
port B. Knowing that the same variation they are obtained by micro injections of Cl minus ion of chloride ions. Now we know chloride ions they need they lead to the decrease in the potential difference and they lead to hyperpolarization. If you remember, so knowing that the same variations are obtained by micro injections of Cl minus ions to the inside of the motor neuron, they want you to formulate a hypothesis about the mode of action of GABA on the cell permeability. Yalla ya Hassan, first part, analyze the action of GABA on the membrane potential and pay attention. We have here two different doses of GABA, D1 and D2, where D1 is less than D2. But then we have to analyze for this graph. Hey, Hassan, what for? Analyze. <clears throat> Yes, Hassan, waiting for the help, Hassan. Yes. After the injection. Yes. And the GABA. The uh, potential difference and D. Uh, Can you solve instead of reading? Uh, please. Can you solve instead of reading? Yalla, Hassan. <clears throat> I think reading is so much harder than solving. Okay, let's move to others. Ali Hariri, what do you think? Analyze. <laughs> uh, at t equal uh, zero milliseconds, the potential yes. difference was was around uh, minus 70 millivolt. This is the resting potential, okay? And it remains constant uh, until t equal two milliseconds. Okay, so where it's the first, with the first dose, one. one. Yes which uh, leads to the decrease of the potential difference to around minus 75 Very millivolt. Very good. What do we call this? The decrease in the potential difference, Ya Ali? Hyperpolarization. This is the hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization. So this hyperpolarization is decreased in the potential difference below the resting one. So this is hyperpolarization. And now Ali, Ali, hyperpolarization here after those D1, it decreases below 70, it decreases to around minus 75 millivolt. Okay, then you can move immediately then, after the dose injection of the dose D2. Okay, the resting, uh, the potential difference increases uh, to minus 80 millivolt. Decreases. At T, yes. Decreases uh, to minus 70 millivolt. Which is a high, higher hyperpolarization or a lower level? It's a higher hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization. So here, the first dose. Thank you, Ali. So the first dose D1, we injected GABA. Dose D1, and then less than dose D2. So after the injection of the GABA, here we have a hyperpolarization which decreases to minus 70 millivolt, 75 millivolt. After the dose D2 of GABA, it decreases to about minus 80 millivolt. So here we have a higher hyperpolarization as the dose of the GABA increase. So what do we call this case whenever we have hyperpolarization at the level of the post-synaptic membrane? What do we call it? We have PSP, post-synaptic potential. This one, is an inhibitory or is an excitatory one? What do you think, Ya Selena? An excitatory or inhibitory one? Inhibitory. Inhibitory, so what do we call it? If we have post-synaptic potential, we have two different types. Can you mention them, uh, Selena? Two different- IPSP. Uh, or? EPSP. Or EPSP. 
So we have excitatory postsynaptic potential or we have inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So in this case, we have hyperpolarization. So we have inhibition of the nervous message. So sure, it's not EPSP, it's not excitation. So it's the IPSP, inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So this is the analytics. Thank you, thank you, Ali, and thank you, Selena. So anal analyze the action of the GABA on the membrane potential. Already we did this. Knowing that the same variations are obtained by the microinjections of CL minus ions to the inside of the motor neuron. So here, whenever we inject CL minus to the inside of the motor neuron, we will have the same results. They said formulate a hypothesis about the mode of action of the GABA on the cell permeability. What do you think here? So here, CL minus injection, it leads to the same results. So what do you think about the action of GABA? Maybe here, GABA, it binds to the receptors of the CL minus channels. These are the chemically gated channels, and this will lead to the hyperpolarization. So maybe GABA, it binds to the receptors of the chloride ions leading to these results, which is the hyperpolarization. So in this exercise, already we know the GABA has an inhibitory role mostly. Also, we know that we have hyperpolarization. Here, if we, for example, if Ali solved the exercise and he didn't mention hyperpolarization, this is one of the key words. So if he didn't mention hyperpolarization, and also if he didn't mention here IPSP, you won't get the full mark. And that's why mostly in the, for example, in the BARAM of the uh, official exams in the Sherman, mostly they didn't mention this. Meaning that the answers, sometimes they are missing. You have a missing parts or missing the complete answer. So whenever you have to write as the Baran, it's not 100% correct. So here, let's move to the correction of this question. Exercise number four. So exercise number four, after injection of the GABA, a hyperpolarization of the uh, mem membrane of the motor neuron, IPSP, is recorded. So the amplitude is uh, increased, amplitude of front of the hyperpolarization increased from 5 millivolt to 10 millivolt. What do you mean by increase from 5 to 10? Increase from 5 to 10, here it becomes the hyperpolarization increase from 5 to 10. So it becomes minus 75, it becomes minus 80. So the hyperpolarization level increases from 5 to 10 as we increase the dose between D1 and D2. Also, the action of GABA is the same as the opening of the chloride channels. So hypothesis may be GABA fixes or binds to the chloride chemically gated channels leading to the hyperpolarization. Or you can say maybe GABA bind to the receptors of the chloride ions leading to this hyperpolarization. The same idea and the same concept. Moving now to exercise number five. Exercise five, they are talking about the action of certain substances such as nicotine found in tobacco, Diazepam and benzodiazepine, or diazepine, the going to be studied in this exercise, exercise number five. So recordings on an isolated ganglion of a nerve chain in an insect they were observed. Before each experiment, spontaneous activity of the ganglion and physiological liquid is recorded to serve as a control. So here. In each one, we have two documents. We have document one, where the nicotine is used, this one. And this is document two, where diazepam is used. This is document two. Here, A, recording A here, and recording A here, they are the control. What is the role of the control? It's used to compare and to explain the results. So here, before each experiment, spontaneous activity of the ganglion they place it in a physiological liquid and to work as a control. So this one is the control where nicotine is used. And this one is a control also, because the recording A is a control also, where diazepam is used too. So here in the first experiment, nicotine solution, this one, recording 1B. So they said document 1, so recording 1. And figure B, this is figure B okay, is placed on the ganglion while 
In the second experiment, diazepam solution is placed on the galgenium and recording 2B, document 2B on how to diazepam solution and the present the graph or the amplitude in microvolt. Okay, this is the micro volts. They said deduce the effect of each of the substances on the nervous system. So here deduce. You have to do logical reasoning and then we move to the deduction of this exercise. Let's start step by step with the first document. Document one in Muhammad where nicotine is used. In the control, we have normal action potentials and we have different frequencies. Whenever we use nicotine, what happens at the level of the amplitude in microvolt? Should I analyze? Yes. You have to explain it. You, know, you have to do logical reasoning and then you have to do, you give the deduction. What is the role of the nicotine? Should I in nicotine? And the yeah. second one, should I the diazepam? Okay? Okay. And yeah, let's start with the first one. Okay. In the first experiment, uh, mm. without nicotine taking place, uh, the amplitude of an action potential was maximum 5 AU. Or five? 5 microvolt. Millivolt. Is that millivolt? Yes. 5 volt. Uh, less than that, less than that with nicotine, which reached like 20. 20? I think after 20. 25. So here, as I enter so here you said, for example, on maximum, approximately. Like, you know, if you get all 15, you 20 to 25, you know, she 45 microvolt, you amplitude. So here, yes. the amplitude. What do you think about frequency? Noting that the frequency without nicotine was less than that uh, with nicotine. Yeah, they were, well, after injection of the nicotine, she started having the increase in the amplitude as well as the increase in the... The rate of frequency. Frequency. So it leaded to the increase on the level of the amplitude and the level of the frequency of the nervous message. Thank you, Muhammad. Moving now to uh, Samar. Good morning, Samar. Somewhere silent mood. <clears throat> Dana, good morning. Dana and Summer, good morning. Very good. I need a participant here, one of you to answer this question, other than Muhammad, other than Selena, other than Ali Harir. I need you one. Other than Selena, and other than Muhammad, and other than Ali Harir. I think if Ali Harir is not here, the next one or something. Samar, good morning. Dana, Rama, Hadil. I need one volunteer to answer this question. Yes. Noura also. So I need one of these four. Rama, Hadil, Noura and Samar, the females. I need one of you to answer this question. Yes. No volunteers. So I'm going to answer this question. Great. Tamam. So with that, without diazepam, we have a normal frequencies here, as Muhammad said before, and we have amplitude. The maximum one was about 20, let's say. So here it decreases. Maximum amplitude was one microvolt, and there is no frequency. So here diazepam has mostly an inhibitory role. It inhibits the propagation of the nervous message. So in the presence of nicotine in document one, recording B, it shows an increase in the frequency of the action potential and their amplitude, where the highest amplitude recorded was about 45 microvolt. How did I mention 45 microvolt? As I said to Muhammad, 45 microvolt here from 20 and here to 25. 
in here you move the for example the minus and the plus you work as absolute value so here 25 to 20 20 plus 25 is 45 that's why i said amplitude of 45 microvolt so here is greater than the highest amplitude recorded in the absence of nicotine which was the maximum in the absence of nicotine was 15 microvolt this showed that the nicotine has excitatory role due to the excitation and increase in the frequency as well as in the amplitude of the potential difference or the actual potential here. While in the presence of diazepam, diazepam in document two, it shows what? That the recording B shows a decrease in the frequency and the amplitude of action potential. So it shows decrease in the frequency as well as decrease in the actual potential where the highest recording amplitude was about one microvolt, which is smaller than the highest amplitude in the absence of diazepam, which is about 30 microvolt. How did I mention 30 microvolt? I can mention here 30 microvolt from this. Here is 30 microvolt. Here 10, and here we have 10. So here about 30 or 20 microvolt is the maximum. Okay, well here the maximum, it was about one microvolt so this explains that there is a difference in the presence or the absence so here we can deduce that the diazepam has an inhibitory effect it inhibits the propagation of the nervous message here by inhibiting the frequency as well as inhibiting or decreasing the level of the potential difference or the amplitude of the action potential so here you can say that these two substances the nicotine and diazepam, they have antagonistic effect. They have opposite effect. Both of them, they have opposite effect where nicotine, it has excitatory one. It leads to the excitation. It leads to the increase in the frequency as well as the increase in the potential difference amplitude. And diazepam, it has an inhibitory effect. Why? Since it leads to the decrease and the amplitude of the actual potential, as well as it leads to the uh, decrease in the level of the frequency of this actual potential. So these two substances, they have antagonistic effect. This is the conclusion here. Both of them, they have antagonistic effect. Why? Because one of them, it leads to the excitation, and the second one, it leads to the inhibition or the blockage of the nervous message. That's why these two nicotine and diazepam they have opposite function or they have antagonistic effect on the nervous system. So here in this session, we solved exercise number four and exercise number five. And exercise number four as a revision. Exercise number four, it talked about the uh, GABA, the mode of action of gamma amyl butyric acid. Whenever it increases the dose of the GABA, the potential difference will decrease more and more hyperpolarization will be obtained. This is due to effect due to the dose. So as the dose of the GABA increase, the level of the hyperpolarization will increase too, as we said in the figure in exercise number four. So as the dose increases from D1 to D2, the level of the hyperpolarization increases from minus 75 to minus 80. So hyperpolarization level increases. So here we can deduce that even though you can use these and other exercises to solve the hypothesis, to give an indication and so on, that GABA, it binds, maybe it binds to CL minus, and this leads to the hyperpolarization. In exercise number five, we differentiated between two different neurotransmitters because we have nicotine that's found in tobacco and diazepam. So we said that the recording A and recording uh, A in both documents one and two where nicotine and diazepam is used. Both of them, they are control. They used to compare the experiment without nicotine and without diazepam. With nicotine, the frequency increases as well as the amplitude, whereas in the presence of diazepam, we have no frequency even, or there is a small amplitude of about one uh, microvolt. So this can be explained that diazepam, it has an inhibitory function. It inhibits the transmission or the propagation of the nervous message. However, nicotine, it has a, uh, excite, an excitatory function. It leads to the uh, propagation or facilitate the propagation of the nervous message, thus increasing the frequency as well as the amplitude of the nervous message. 
This is everything for our session today. Tomorrow we continue with exercise six, solving exercise six, and we will introduce our new chapter, which is about the immune system, about the immunology.